Hello, everybody, and welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com, or if you're watching on our growing YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me as he always does, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And, and Andrew, we're here to talk about the, the 2021 ACC kickoff down in Charlotte, which you obviously were at on Wednesday. Um, talk to Mac Brown, to Mon Fox, Jeremiah Gimmel, and Sam Howe. Those were the guys that were representing the Tar Heels down there. Obviously, we're recording this on a Thursday. Um, we wanted to record it yesterday at the event, and I'm going to let you. This is going to kind of kick off the first thing I want to talk about. But I, I know the uh, how loud it is in that area and just so much commotion and everything going on. It's, it's almost nearly impossible to find an area that you can uh, get some peace and quiet and, and try to do a video. So, that kind of segues into the first thing I want to talk about. What was it like being there back in person and, and it kind of what was the electricity like at the event yesterday uh, down in Charlotte? Well, also in classic ACC kickoff form, the Wi-Fi was terrible. So yeah, that's nothing there's different. no guarantee that we would have even been able to do a video. Yeah, it's good. Uh, when I uploaded Max breakout session interview, I videotaped it was like 17 and a half minutes. It. It stalled at an hour and 32 minutes remaining the first time. Then I had to scrap it and redo it again, and it took like 41 minutes. So that's how bad the Wi-Fi. I used my hotspot most of the day. That tells you all you need to know. Yeah, yeah so it wasn't even worth it. There was so much commotion. The area, it, it was at the West End, downtown Charlotte, and they were we were on, um, I guess, the second floor and first floor, the third mm -hmm. floor and second floor. Anyway, there were two floors, the, the, the downstairs floor, was for uh, food. We could have meals and stuff down there. The coaches had their meetings we tucked away back in a corner. And then the next level upstairs, so there was an escalator that you would go up and down to, to go between the two floors. That's where the ballroom was and uh, the breakout sessions. The media workroom was the ballroom this year. So <laughs> Jeff Collins of Georgia Tech were doing, the, were doing their press conference. And in the ballroom, there's like a Ballyhoo press conference. It's all showy. It's bright lights and all that kind of stuff. I, I tweeted out some photos of that. And then the breakout room is a different place where you're right next to the players and, and the coaches, and you get better stuff. Mm -hmm. The closer you're with someone when you do an interview, you're always going to get better stuff. But uh, so Jeff Collins of Georgia Tech are doing their loud presser, and I'm sitting there trying to transcribe some stuff, and it was – challenging to say the least yeah. not i'm not complaining here i love the acc kickoff especially this year because i saw people that i hadn't seen in a long time now i covered every carolina football game last year and almost every basketball game there were a couple of which media wasn't allowed i got iced out the ice storm going up to charlottesville but i was at everything so there were a few people i saw on a regular basis only a handful and they had masks on Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen Greg Barnes's face in a year and a half as an example, mean, yeah. or CL Brown or people like that. Even my good friend, Brett Friedlander, I got to see his actual face, which may not be a great thing, but and they got to see mine, which absolutely is not a great thing. So from the standpoint that it seemed normal, a couple people wear a mask, but it seemed normal. Like I shook Max hand, hadn't shaken Max hand in a year and a half. Yeah, literally. Right? So that was good. Um, being around Sam and Tamana, Jeremiah, being up close talking to him. You know, I appreciate so much the effort that Jeremy went through to, to give us all the access via Zoom that we had in the last year plus with Carolina football. But there's no substitute for being a couple feet away from a kid and talking to him. No. And it was it was a joy. It was a pleasure to be around Tamana because I, I was at Tamana's um, Fedora's freak show when he committed and interviewed him after that 45 years ago and talking to Jeremiah about the controversy about the Tar Heels not thinking a 12 team playoff makes any sense and talking to Sam about you know come on just admit it you, you kind of think about the Heisman sometimes don't you you can't do that in the zoo no you can't you only get one question maybe a follow-up sometimes so there were so many things about yesterday that were fantastic. And it's going on again today. The Coastal Division was Wednesday. The Atlantic Division is going on right now. I only had to be there for the Coastal, so I drove home last night and was actually able to upload stuff when I got home because I actually have Wi-Fi that works in my house. So uh, we could talk about a lot of things, Jacob. I'm sorry you weren't able to make it. I know that you yeah. were there a couple of years ago. It's mm -hmm. it's a pretty neat experience. You get to see, you know, it's like a walled-off area where it's ACC football. The coaches are yeah. walking around. They're not worried about who's – people don't – 
fanboy him or anything like that. Mm-hmm. All the media you get to see, and uh, it's a neat experience. And it's always the the launch to the launch of the season. Yeah, no, I've, I've obviously been to the the football one a couple of years ago, Max first year, and and um, basketball basketball one as well a couple of years ago before COVID hit. And yeah, it's an interesting experience. The Wi-Fi has never been great down there. You know, I'm not trying to take a shot at the ACC, but it's just a fact. But um, no, nah, it's it's an inter- it's a fun event. It's a unique event. It kind of you can feel the energy and the buzz ahead of a new season, and it, it's kind of just a kickoff of okay, yeah, football season's just about here. Get a couple weeks off, kind of, and then things really start when fall camp kicks off. But no, I, I, mean, I wish I could have made it down there. I'm glad you were able to, to get down there and do everything. I thought you did a fantastic job down there. So we've kind of discussed the energy and what it was like to be there. Now let's switch the focus to the players in the in Mac that was obviously there and kind of your takeaways from that. Uh, let's start off with Mac. Um, and then we'll kind of dive into the players after that. I'll, I'll ask you some questions about those guys, but just kind of overall, you know, thoughts and experience of Mac being there, maybe any unique experiences, just kind of your biggest takeaways from finally, you know, like you said, actually being face to face with Mac a little bit for the first time in a long time. Mac, Mac was all smiles. Mac was, was, I, I tweeted out a photograph of his shoes and I said, his shoes are on point. Mac was on point. <laughs> I don't know if he drinks orange juice, but if he does, he had a lot yesterday morning. He's feeling good. A whole lot. Like he had an IV of orange juice hooked up to him that was fueling him throughout the day. And that was awesome to see. Uh, Mac, Mac, Mac totally, totally gets it. And I'm not saying anything right now that anybody watching doesn't know, but it, it, it amazes me every time I'm around him, how much he just gets it. Mm-hmm. And you know, he's a guy that can say, we're, we're supposed to be really, really good this year and do it in a way where he's not boasting. Yeah. He's a guy that could say, you know, we've got some concerns here that are major concerns. And someone asked him, you know, what is your biggest concern, your biggest weakness? And immediately without hesitation, went into the running back room. He's, he has a way of saying it that, yeah, it's a major concern, but I'm not worried. So it, it's not too high and it's not too low. And he has an ability to communicate that and get his point across. And, you, and I don't think there's much BS that goes on with when he's actually answering the question. But I'll tell you, my favorite thing about yesterday, aside from seeing a lot of the people in the media I haven't seen in a long time, that was that was an absolute pure, that was pure joy. But watching Mac just have a great time, Jacob. Yeah. Mac was enjoying himself. He was all smiles. Um, in fact, I sat down to do an interview with Rob Sanders. He has a radio show in Columbia, South Carolina. And Mac, this is on Radio Row, and Mac was right next to me doing a spot with Josh Graham. Josh has a really good show in the triad. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Rob said, look at his shoes this is before we started our, our interview, right? Look at his shoes. And I looked at him, Max shoes like, those are good looking shoes, right? And he said, those are on point. So I'm stealing Rob's on point thing. I right? love that out. So we were getting ready to start and Mac finished. And he looks up and goes, Andrew, and shakes my hand. And we're, he's just got this massive smile. It's like his head is this big and his smile is that big, right? <laughs> and I said, I got to get a picture of those shoes. He puts his foot up on the table. And I'm able to snap a photo and we had some fun with it. And I am saying this because I'm trying to illustrate just the mood that Mac was in. Mm -hmm. And I I think he was in that mood because he's got a good team, but more so he felt normal. I mean, he, I think he enjoys being around the media. I think he understands and respects the media a lot more now because of his experiences at ESPN. And and then yesterday was kind of a celebration of college football, of ACC football, of what so many of us have, have invested our lives into. Yesterday was the official start of my 26th season in this business. Mm-hmm. It's an absolute blessing, Jacob. Mm-hmm. It's a blessing because I get to do what it's my dream job. And I went back home a few weeks ago talking to people I grew up with, spent a lot of time with old friends who are like, oh, yeah, of course, this is what you do. People should have figured out 30 years ago this is what you were going to do for a living. So it is a blessing to be around the people. It was more of a blessing. And I think Mac was experiencing that yesterday. And it was really good to see because. I mean, we've been through a lot of crap in the last year and a half, and there's still crap going on right now. But to have a day to see everybody smiling, even with the crappy Wi-Fi, like I said, the Wi-Fi sucks with a smile, right? I'm just, and, and even Brett Freelander. Who no, usually has, about it, Brett and the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Brett's been warring with the internet for 25 years, and <laughs> and, uh, and he, 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 he even said, yeah, the internet, the internet sucks, the Wi-Fi sucks, and he said it with a smile wearing a banana shirt. So... Mac was in great spirits. The players, Tavon didn't stop smiling, which was a beautiful thing to see. 
uh, Jeremiah. Go watch our, my interview with Jeremiah from the breakout session. We talked a lot about uh, the, the national perception read on, on the players saying that they don't want a 12 game playoff. I have a thing in a notebook today about, or actually I'm writing a separate story about that too. And Jeremiah lays it out there, man. They're not sending dollars in football and college football. As for basketball, you can have it in the NFL. It doesn't exist in college football. Very interesting stuff. You can't have that discourse on zoom. No. You can have it in person. And Sam, Sam's growing into the role of being the guy. He's the guy with this stuff. He's the RPO guy. He's the reading the defense and breaking down the film guy. He's been that guy for a long time, but he's the face of the program. And what I saw from him yesterday, Jacob, is a guy who's starting to, to understand and embrace that role. And I think he's pretty good at it. I, Sam Howe in November talking to us is going to even be more than what he is now. And I think I've seen some growth in that area, which is one of my favorite things about covering college kids. Yeah, definitely. And I was, this is going to segue into the next thing I want to talk about, but I was listening to Jeremiah's interview um, last night after it was posted and everything. And one thing he talked about um, was about the culture of the program, which we talked about a little bit, but he talked about, you know, you've got younger guys now that are stepping up and holding people accountable instead of the older guys kind of having to do it. Maybe like they had to do a couple of years ago when, when Mac first came in and everything, the culture is kind of changing in that room. And uh, I guess I want to ask you about, in terms of, you know, Mac or the players, you've written a lot of notebooks so far. Are going to continue to post a couple more and, and some stories as well, like you mentioned uh, with, with Gimmel and what he said. But any – what was kind of the biggest quotes or the biggest things that stood out, if any, from talking well, to you, Mac and, and talking to the players? I think what you just picked out is fabulous. We didn't plan this in advance. This is all raw that we're doing mm -hmm. here. I asked him, he said that because I asked him, I said, you know, in the last two years, Mac had to build you guys up. Mm -hmm. He had to make you believe you could be something. Mm -hmm. There were different variances, you know, two years ago, just you guys won five games in two years. You just wanted you guys to feel good about yourselves. Mm -hmm. Last year it was, okay, you guys can, can, can be you know, competitive. You could be pretty good. Now it's, there's a totally different message. So he doesn't need to tell them that they can be really good because everybody else is doing that for him. Now, Mac and the staff and the senior leaders, their job is to maybe temper things a little bit. You don't want to get too full of yourself. So I asked him, I asked Jeremiah, you know, is that one of your job responsibilities right now? And he immediately said, yes, that is. But he then went into talking about the younger guys. And he mentioned Tony Grimes specifically saying that the younger guys understand this too. So when you need to temper things and they're in that situation right now, you want to, you want everybody in that room to be on, on board. You don't want to have the older guys reminding the younger guys in the middle of August, hey, wait a minute, guys, we got to knock you down a peg because we're a little too high and mighty about ourselves right now because the world's talking about how we're going to win the Coastal and we might be the dark horse to break through to the CFP. So they're doing that now, and the message has gotten through so well that Jeremiah said the younger guys understand it as well. So that tells me that the culture that Mac has now spent three years installing in this program is absolutely 100% there. He steers the message. It trickles down to the older guys and then down to the younger guys. If the younger guys are reminding the team of that message and they're not even in fall camp yet, that tells me that they've done an outstanding job of understanding who they are and where they are. Because Mac said, A, people are throwing sugar all over us, but we're going to get Every, everybody's circling us on their calendar. We got to learn how to deal with that. And the other thing is we got a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. You know, the people are saying this about us. If we're going to meet their expectations and not that that's their mission, but kids read stuff. You can't avoid it nowadays. Oh, yeah. if you're going to meet their expectations and be as good as you can be, which is reaching your potential. You got a lot of work to do. So mm -hmm. I think that that was really interesting that Jeremiah went right into that. It wasn't like, he talked for 20 seconds and then, oh, I better say this too. Because he went right into it tells me it was 100% legit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I thought that was a big quote that stood out for me just because we've talked about it and we've talked about them trying to get to that point. And it now seems like they're there or very, very, very close to having everybody on board in terms of everybody trying to, no matter if you're a senior or a freshman, really trying to build the culture up and keep everybody accountable. Um, 
What stood and out about you know what helps, by the way? And you go know, ahead, go real ahead. quickly, you know what helps is the Florida State game last year. Yeah, that's a good point. And Mac brought that up during the main press conference yesterday, and he's talked mm-hmm. about it with us, Jacob. Mm-hmm. They knew they weren't number. He knew he knew they weren't number five in the country. The players had to have that reminder. The best thing that may have happened to them long term for the for the stability and strength and of the program, and it's a layering process, which we talked about forty six thousand times last fall. Yes, it is. <laughs> You've got to have those moments where the met where, where reality is hammered home pretty hard. Sometimes it means losing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that means being number five in the country, going to Tallahassee and get your rear end handed to you right out of the gate mm-hmm. by a team that stinks. Mm-hmm. But they didn't stink that night. They were good that night. And you know, that was that's part of their remember when Carolina almost beat Clemson in 19 and Max said that's the moment. And they told them that that you guys are that close. The four states pitching the same thing about the Carolina game last year. That's what Norville's telling his guys. So that's a moment for them. But that was also a moment for Carolina to understand that just because there's a five next to your name doesn't mean that that five is who you are. Mm-hmm. So I think the message that I was just talking about, it's been easier to get through this offseason because of what happened in Tallahassee last year. So they already have seen a real life example of what happens when you believe your press clippings. Definitely. Definitely. What stood out about Sam? Anything in particular? Yeah. Well, yeah, he just, looks the part. I mean, he's, he's always physically looked a little older because of the beard and everything else. But, you know, when we talked to him a couple of years ago, and mind you, we didn't have any face-to-face stuff last year. He's just kind of a shy guy. Um, when he's around older people like yeah. me, or even you're, I mean, you're probably what, six years older than him. Yeah, right no, now. it's kind of crazy to think. It's still um, mind-boggling to me. <laughs> if you walk by him, he kind of looked the other way, looked down or something yeah, like yeah. that. But th- he wasn't like that yesterday. His eyes were wide. He was, you know, again, the, the, the vitality. There was vitality he's in him. He's, yeah. he, he's maturing. But, but I think he understands being the face of the program that, got, you know, stuff has to be extracted out. And I think it's more easily coming out now. He's a really interesting guy. He's, he is mature in a lot of ways. He's totally focused. Um, there's probably not a lot of lanes in his life, which Mac has talked about before when he made the joke about a couple of years ago, hey, do you have a Valentine's Day day? Well, yeah, it's Madden because he's going to do football <laughs> stuff. And the guy that I saw yesterday is a guy who I think really understands that the next nine months of his life is going to be very unique because he has a chance to lead a team uh, to something special. He has a chance to play for a Heisman Trophy, and he has a chance to be the number one pick in the NFL draft. Mm-hmm. You know, as a sophomore, he's just Sam Howell College guy. So, and during the COVID era, we're not even you know, not even around students. As a freshman, he was just the young guy trying to figure out it week to week. You know what this whole thing's all about. He's in a totally different place right now, and I thought that yesterday was a really good start for him being the face of the program, not just saying the right thing, but I think it's pretty genuine. Uh, he, he's, I think he's more comfortable talking about his teammates than himself, but he did talk about himself. And I actually got him to admit yesterday, and someone was asking about the highs, but he was kind of given the, well, you know, I just want to help my team win kind of stuff. And I said, but, you know, did, at some point during the off season, when you could afford to let your mind wander, did you think about it? Did you think about, man, you have a chance to win the Heisman. No one's ever done that at the school. And he admitted that, yeah, he, he has. And it's pretty cool that he actually dreamed about it when he was a kid. Mm. He used to, you know, fantasize about being a Heisman Trophy type guy. And oh, yeah. here he is now in that situation. It's becoming, it could become a possible reality for him. So I thought that was nice that Sam kind of opened up a little bit because when he gets to the next level, you know, people are going to write a lot of stories. They're going to want to pick oh, yeah. at all the different parts of his personality. So the more comfortable he is letting some of that out now, it'll be easier for him when he gets to the next level. Yeah, definitely. Um, last thing on the players, anything uh, to mind, and obviously we haven't talked too much about to yet, but the, whole, the oldest head in that group, probably the oldest guy there period when you consider how long he's been there, but anything stand out from your conversation with him or interacting with him? Just joy. Yeah. And he was smiling the whole time. That's what, what I got from watching the, your breakout interview. Like you could just kind of tell he was just happy to be there more than anything. You know, COVID is what it's been for so many people. It's been awful in a lot of ways. But and, and I know that there are a lot of people that don't agree with the players getting the extra year, especially mm-hmm. if they'd already played four or five years. And remember, Taman played 75 snaps in the first two games of the 2016 season, which I reminded him of yesterday against Georgia and Illinois. He played a lot, played pretty still, well. 
Still blows my and mind. He, <laughs> yeah, and then he got hurt, misses the rest of the season. The irony is, as I sidebar for a moment, which I'm prone to do, um, he if he doesn't get hurt after the Illinois game and plays the rest of his true freshman season, he's gone two years ago. Yep. But he's still around now. The NCAA gave guys like him an opportunity, and he took it. So he's got a sixth year in school. He's going to be real close to having a master's degree from a really good university and a sixth year in the football program. And uh, he, we saw him at the Showtime camp, Jacob, and that's the first time I started thinking, you know what, maybe he could coach. He's got yeah. a good personality. He's a smart guy. Uh, he's a comfortable person to be around. And I think that those are qualities that uh, would make him a pretty good coach. So if it doesn't work out the next level, uh, I think that there will be opportunities for him to come back to Carolina as a GA yeah. and launch a coaching career. So when people talk about, oh, well, these guys aren't getting paid, he had the value of his experience of having a six football season in North Carolina, even if he doesn't make one NIL dollar, the way it sets him up for life, mm-hmm. you can't put a price tag on that. And so it was really – and I think he fully appreciates it. I just got the vibe yesterday that, man, I'm one fortunate dude. Yeah. And uh, and that was pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. Because he is. He is a fortunate guy. Mm-hmm. It's a unique store. I mean, it's one of the most unique in college football probably when you just consider how long – He's going to play 3,000 snaps. When this season's over, he will play 3,000 snaps on defense at North Carolina. I'd break some records too. I mean, you know what I mean? He's... Yeah, I mean, the records, you got to – you know, with all due respect to Tamani, he's going to pass by a couple of people in sacks. You probably need to put an asterisk next to it. Yeah, just because – it's, it's not his fault. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not credit negative toward him. It's just – He's got that extra year, and so the, he'll break some records. But 3,000 snaps, that's a guy who gave this school a lot. And he's already played 2,517 snaps. Mm-hmm. So we're talking 483, which he'll, he'll get this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, easily, yeah. And, Especially yeah, if they play 14 games. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. It still blows my mind that he played in that Georgia game. It's unbel- it seems like so, so long ago. Um, and he won't get as many snaps as previous years. And he talked about that yesterday, too, because – the depth, I asked him about yeah. Dez. I asked him about the depth, and I said, you know, is Tamon Fox at 45 snaps going to be a better, more efficient guy than at 70 snaps? And he said, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So he knows he's not going to be on the field as much as past years, even though he's a six-year guy and wants to play in the NFL, because that's better for the team. Mm-hmm. You know, you remember what Max said about AM and Notre Dame? They got mm-hmm. worn down. Well, if Tamon's on the field playing his 40th snap in the middle of the fourth quarter, in South Bend this year, that's better than him being on the field playing his 60th snap in the middle of the fourth quarter home against Notre Dame last year. He'll be fresher. Yeah. Fresher, lighter, be sharper, and should be better. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it, it kind of shows the culture, I think, of the program too, and how it's changing a guy like Taman not being pissed off that, you know, he come back for his sixth year and probably not going to play as many snaps. I mean, it's whatever's best for the team. I think everybody knows that and is willing to sacrifice that to, to reach what they want to reach now. But I we think talk- he knows it's best for him too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely. He's gets yeah. another year for NFL teams to look at him. Yeah. And, and, and to get better. That's yeah. He doesn't need thing. to be out there playing 70 snaps because eventually that probably backfires on you more than it helps you. Cause you're just, you know, a lot of those snaps, you're just dog tired out there. You know what I mean? And you're not, you're not getting your best reps on film. So yeah, I think that'll that'll end up probably benefiting him in the long run. And kind of tying into that, we've talked a lot about culture and expectations for this year's team. One of the things that I remember this is the last thing I kind of want to talk about before we wrap it up. One of the things I remember from my past experiences at the ACC football and basketball kickoffs over the past few years is, you know, there's some teams that walk in and it's just like, oh, yeah, you know, there's, you know, Syracuse or whatever. No disrespect to Syracuse. But, you know, when you're there and you see a team, especially in the past, like a Clemson walk in the room, there's kind of an aura around them. There's kind of, oh, these are the big dogs. These are the, these are the guys. These guys are the real deal. These are the big men on campus in this building, if you will. Did, did you? Yeah. Did you get that vibe with Carolina yesterday when, with, with the Coastal Division in particular? Well, yeah, yesterday was the Coastal Division. It was absolutely that vibe. In fact, I had a lot of media from other states mm-hmm. ask me about Carolina. Mm -hmm. Um, I had some interesting conversations with some guys who cover other programs in other states. And, uh, you know, some of them, you know, what just what, how are they going to replace Javante and Michael and Daz and Diami? And, you know, Max like, Hey, we got guys. You didn't know who Diami was this time two years ago, but you found out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's kind of Max message. And I told him too, I said, you know, 
Carolina fans, most of them don't know who Josh Downs is, but by the middle of October, like they're all going to know who he is. Oh, they're going to know, yeah. There's no doubt about that. They have those guys. But I think more than anything, it was, can they break that ceiling? Can they break through? And um, I was actually – they have an area where they have mannequins dressed up in each of the football uniforms. Yep. It's actually really cool. Mm-hmm. And I went over there to look at that. I was going to take some pictures. And I did take one of the Carolina guy. And I was taking a picture of it. And the guy who covers another school from another state comes up to me and says, so you think they can break through? And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not sure the defensive line is good enough for them to break through. And, it, and it's a, a tall order to ask a team that went that won five games in two years here a couple of years ago to break through three years later. I said, as, as well as Max doing on the trail, as great a job as he's doing building this program, and as good as Sam is and some of these other guys, I'm just not sure there are enough parts there I know to make mean. that leap. It's such an enormous difference from being near the ceiling to actually breaking through the ceiling in college football. Mm-hmm. That's why Oklahoma, Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson, maybe a, an LSU, Notre Dame, Georgia are always in the CFP because that's who they are. They're on a different level. Mm-hmm. But I did say that I think that they could challenge. And the fact that people were asking that question yeah. before they got into specifics about the team is an indication that people are watching North Carolina. And, the, and a couple of the Clemson guys I talked to, they are very – a couple of years ago when Max started getting it going and Carolina almost beat them, like, ah, basketball school, whatever – now I think that they're understanding, hey, they picked up a couple of kids on the trail that Clemson wanted. They're inching closer. I think that Clemson can hear a little pitter-patter now mm-hmm. where they didn't hear anything before. They're not yet footsteps. This season will determine whether or not they're footsteps, but there is a pitter-patter. And I think that that's what people are asking about. You know, it's interesting. Carolina's got a brand in football. I know that people don't really think much about it, but when Carolina's good in football, they get a lot of attention. They have before. Those teams in the in the late 70s and early 80s got a lot of national attention. Go back and look at the weekly AP rankings in 80, 81, 82, even 83, and see where Carolina football was. Go back and look at the way the nation responded to Carolina, the media that is, in, in the late 90s when Mac had some really good teams. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an easier sell than a lot of these other basketball schools. There's a little more Michigan, Texas, UCLA, and North Carolina. I think a lot of UNC football fans realize so when they're good, they make noise. They, they resonate a little bit. People want to talk about them. And the Mac factor and the Sam factor were enormous as well because people asked about that. But I, I think the fact that people are talking about them, people are keeping an eye on them. They wonder if Mac can actually get it done there. The folks who two years ago said that he wasn't going to get it done, they've either shut up or completely changed their tune. Now they're asking if he can actually break through the ceiling get to the CFP. Mm-hmm. He was hired... 30 months ago, <laughs> 31 months ago. Mm. That's impressive. Mm. And I told them, I said, yeah, my basic response is they're on that trajectory. I don't know if they're going to puncture through or not. They've, this program is banged its head on the ceiling in different decades under different head coaches in the past, and they've never been able to puncture through. Mm-hmm. They might be primed to do it. I'm not sure that 2021 is the year they do it. I think they get really close. Maybe it's the Drake May era in which they do because they'll be probably be better on defense and maybe have more depth each year on the offensive line, that kind of thing. But the fact that that is what people are talking about is pretty interesting. So I've gone to a lot of ACC kickoffs where nobody stopped me that covers other programs to ask me about Carolina. Oh no. Yeah. Or in this school, a lot of the times I was covering all four in-state schools and nobody asked me about any of them. So you mean, <laughs> But I would say at least a dozen members of the media from other states stop me to ask me if this is the year for Carolina. Yeah, that says – I'm glad. Yeah, that says a lot when you look at how far they've come in a, in a short amount of time. And that's as credit to what Mac and his staff have been able to do over there and, and the players as well that he's brought in that, and what they've been able to do on the field. I mean – High expectations, man. I, I do agree with you whether they'll be able to break through that ceiling and get to the, you know, the the top top of college football kind of remains to be seen. If I was a betting man, I probably wouldn't bet on it happening this year. But I mean, they are the trajectory is is on the way. Yeah, it's it's hard for me. It's hard to say something's going to happen that's never happened. Before. Exactly. Exactly. One hundred percent. I could. I, I think the odds are. That's the other thing about Sam and the Heisman. I said, you know, they got to win ten games for him to win the Heisman. Oh, yeah. They can't go eight and four. He could throw over 5,000 yards. He's not going to win it. Mm-hmm. 
So I do, but I do think the odds are probably a little better that he wins the Heisman than they get to the CFP. Mm-hmm. Now, if they get to the CFP, he's going to win the Heisman because yeah. he'll, he'll be so good. Mm-hmm. And let's keep in mind, we're not doing a season preview right now. I want to go ahead and throw this in here because this was part of the discussion. You look at your back six on the schedule, Miami at home, got to go to Notre Dame, got to go to Penn on a Thursday night and close at NC State the day after Thanksgiving. You know, Notre Dame's going to be really good in rank. Miami's going to be ranked. Notre Dame's going to be ranked. I think Pitt's going to be really good this year. They're, they're a dark horse in the Coastal with Kenny Pickett. You know, they, they, they lost a few guys on D, but I think they're going to be good. They could be ranked when Carolina goes there. Yeah. And I think State has a chance to have the best team that Dorrance had. I agree. They have a chance to finish second in the Atlantic. And if that's the case, they're going to be ranked when Carolina goes to Raleigh. So Carolina has a chance to play four ranked game teams in its last six games leading up to the ACC championship, a lot of opportunities for Sam to get a lot of exposure to play in really important games. Notre Dame games on NBC. The, the pick game was a Thursday night on ESPN. The NC State game was exclusive ABC on a Friday afternoon at the same time slot as the Notre Dame game last year. So the opportunities are there to do a lot of things that haven't been done in Chapel Hill before. Definitely. Yeah, it's big expectations for the Tar Heels, man. And I, th- I think – with the roster they got, with the staff they got, just with the with the talent they have on that team, I think there's no reason to expect that, that Carolina, Carolina can't have a big year. And it's not going to be easy, but there's opportunities there to, to win some big games that will propel them potentially to the college football playoff if they can find it. So, yeah. Yeah, good stuff, AJ. Uh, I appreciate you hopping on here and, and talking about your experiences down in Charlotte. wish the Wi-Fi was a little bit better for you, but, you know, it is Me what too. it is. Right? <laughs> it is what it is, right? You gotta I would it. imagine that you and Dina, with the text messages I was sending you guys yesterday, some of the expletives in there, you probably would have preferred not to get them because of the Wi-Fi. I mean, it took me forever to get videos up. I actually had to drive home to finish uploading videos. Oh, man, I can relate. I remember Two and a half days. hour drive. I got home. Mm-hmm. My dog, tag, my, my wife and daughter were gone at my wife's mom's house. So the dog was alone. And he attacked me like he hadn't seen me in 40 years. As soon as I chilled him out, boom, I'm, I'm, I tried to reload the Taman Fox videos. I had to share it with you because we had video issues. Yeah. And then you uploaded it. So that's why the player interviews took so long to get up. Yeah, it was. It, we were there. Trust me, guys. We, we, we tried. It was just, you know, the Wi Fi <laughs> didn't work. What you get. I screwed up on my camera a couple of times. I screwed up with Sam's video big time. So, hey, man, I it's early. Responsibility. It's early, man. You know, you gotta you gotta get back in the groove. You know? I haven't had not used my I don't know where it is. I hadn't used my camera. That's a good point. I used the camera in like yes. 16 months. Mm-hmm. I forgot how to use it. You gotta get I'm back in the, the mode. I'm not the sharpest tack in the box. <laughs> you gotta get back in Especially the when it comes to techno stuff. It's preseason. You get to iron out the kinks right now. You know what I'm saying? That's this yeah, like any like, iron them out something fierce. My iron was like this big yesterday. <laughs> oh, I love it, it's man. It's still steaming. Yeah, I love it, man. Good stuff, AJ. And, and guys, if you haven't seen the notebooks AJ has ran so far, the ones he'll be putting out and, and some stories and, and whatnot, make sure you guys stay tuned for that. You can also find the breakout interviews, Mac, Sam, Jeremiah, and Taman on our YouTube channel. You can obviously find that below. Just click on the channel and you will find that. But AJ, appreciate you helping on here. I've been yeah. Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Um, Not far away from football season now, so make sure you guys keep it locked to Tar Heel Illustrated. Dot com. If you want to sign up for a premium subscription, link below. You can do that for just eight thirty three a month. Great time to do it. You get access to so much content that you you can't see unless you're signed up. So and our message board, which is a huge perk of of what we do. And we've got an awesome little community here at tarillustrated.com. So link below if you want to sign up for that and take advantage before fall camp starts here in the next couple of weeks. But you guys know the drill: like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell as well, so you know every time. We upload a video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.